Today I'm checking out this 2019 Subaru WRX Sport. Without any further ado, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's go ahead and get straight on with the review of this Subaru. Before I begin though, I want to go ahead and give a huge thank you to the owner of this car, the, the Black Widow WRX, for letting me check out her beautiful WRX today. It's an absolutely gorgeous spec and it's definitely one of a kind and I must say this has truly been incredible to check out a car that I've been dying to check out. I've been wanting to check out a WRX for a while and yes today I'm finally doing that. Without any further ado, let's get straight on to it. To start with the review, let's go ahead and start with some of the exterior styling details about this particular WRX. Now, this car is basically bone stock with modifications, however the exteriors have plenty of different changes from a regular WRX just to make it look better. For one, on the roof of the car you have a red hourglass, since you know this is the WRX, this is the Black Widow WRX though, so it's going to look like a Black Widow Spider. So again, this spiders are basically the theme of this car, of course you've got a Black Widow Spider on the side of the car, and also just like you also got the Spider-Man logo on the side of the car, on the, on the front, on the front, on the front passenger side fender, or technically on both fenders. It's pretty much basically all themed for Black Widow spiders and I must say it just looks really good and of course up front on the front of the door on the passenger door you got all of the sponsors and stuff like that all across the front end of this car and outside of the window you got her Instagram which will be a link in the description box down below and of course right above the headlights you, and of course on the front grille as well you have this red line that circles across the whole front end of this car as well to make this car pop out even more and it makes it look really good this car also has a red valve stem cap which looks pretty cool on this car as well as red lug nuts and red brake calipers as well as a red WRX logo on the side as well and I must say it just makes it look so much better on the front end of this car that's some of the red details on this car but this car is theme is not only red details this car's details also features a lot of carbon fiber including a carbon fiber front, front splitter with some red struts on it you know of course they're being more red of course you also got a black widow front plate on the side as well and also the subaru logo is actually red and carbon fiber which makes it look really good as well as well we also got a red tow hook and that, which looked really good on this car as well and that's not the only spider that's actually hidden on this car if you actually look right in front of the uh, right in front of the hood the hood air intake you wouldn't very barely notice it, but you can notice a little spider in there, which looks really, really good. Now let's go and take a look at some of the rear details about this W Subaru WRX. Of course, you got this nice looking rear diffuser, it's red and black, and it looks really good with carbon fiber also surrounding it as well, which it looks really good as well. Of course, you got quad exhaust, which they do sound really, really good. And I must say those exhausts, they really do sound really good. Of course, you also got a rear, technically two rear um, spoilers. You got one on, you got one rear spoiler, and you also got one on top of that as well, with a little, with some red, uh, with some red bolts on the top of it as well, in which they look really, really good. And I must say, those are some of the, basically some of the um, exterior, uh, aftermarket features on the exterior of this car. Of course, you all look at this, you also got these uh, scoots on the top of the car. That's what I like to call them. I like to call them scoots on top surrounding the antenna, which it looks really good as well. Taking a look at some of the details on the front of this car. Now, the rest of the stuff on the exterior of this car is pretty much like what you see in any other WRX. Of course, you got this nice looking front grille. I believe these headlights are aftermarket. I believe so. But if they are, I don't know if they're sure because I've seen WRXs with these headlights. I've actually seen a lot of them before with this headlight design. So I don't know if it's aftermarket or if it's bought over its own factory. But I must say the headlights of these of this car just look absolutely incredible with, with them on as well. And they just look really, really good. Of course, you also got the fog lights at the bottom as well. And I must say this car just looks absolutely fantastic on the front end. And I must say it's really, really cool and definitely eye-catching. And so that's pretty much some of the cool exterior styling details on the Subaru WRX. I pretty much already listed all of the exterior cool quirks and features and stuff like that. And so everything else is pretty much like what you would see on a normal WRX. And I must say again, this car just looks absolutely fantastic with the livery design that the owner of this car has had to pick. And I must, it just looks incredible. It really does look absolutely incredible. And thank you though, that's pretty much all the exterior stuff. So now let's go ahead and move on to the interior styling and stuff like that. All right, now we go ahead and move on to the inside of the Subaru WRX where there's a bunch of noticeable details that's actually been changed to the, to the interior of this car. 
one first noticeable thing is the steering wheel. Now this is not no aftermarket steering wheel. So now you can see the top of it and the bottom of it are carbon fiber. It's wrapped with, it's sided with leather with red trimming to match the exterior. Of course, the Black Widow theme and it looks really good. And of course, I remember how I told you how the Subaru logo out in the back was a carbon fiber in red. As you can see, in the steering wheel, in the center of the steering wheel, you also got a carbon and red steering wheel as um, center um, logo as well. And it just looks really good on the inside of this car. You also notice the shift lever. The, sh the gear lever is also covered in red, except it's not just pl any plain red. It is red carbon fiber. And it just looks absolutely insane, especially when I drove it. The steering wheel, this, this shifter really did feel good whenever I drove the car. And I must say, it's really, the shifting of this car is quick and it's easy. And it's one of the quickest and most easiest shifting I've ever tried to do in any car. And makes this car extremely fun to drive. This is why I can see why people love the WRX way so, like, so much. I can understand it now. You will also notice carbon fiber on right above the glove box as well, which looks really good. And you will also notice it on the, also on the door panels as well. You also notice on the front door panels, which they look really, really good. You will also notice carbon fiber right underneath the left climate controller of the driver's side climate control vent as well. And that pretty much wraps up some of the carbon fiber on the, ex and the interior of this car. Oh, actually, take it back. Before I forget it, you also have these really cool carbon fiber cup holders as well. And you also got carbon fiber around the gear lever as well. And that's pretty much wraps up the carbon fiber in the front seats. So now let's go ahead and move on to some more crazy quirks about the inside of this car. Let's go ahead and move on to some, some of the red details on the inside of this car. And I've already mentioned the red stitching on the steering wheel and also the red Subaru logo. You will also notice red stitching on the door panel, on the door panel as well. And you will also notice it above the center screen as well and you will also notice it on the seats and also the floor mats as well and of course you also got the red shifter like i've already mentioned and speaking of the seats these seats are absolutely comfortable these are alcantara and leather and these seats they just feel absolutely incredible. I love how grippy they are. They're designed to really hold you in place whenever you're driving it. Whenever I did drive this car, they really did do a good job. I did. I took this thing around corners pretty fast, and I must say, this thing does. These things here, they did do a really good job with holding me in place. They are absolutely one of the best seats I've ever been inside of, and they feel absolutely incredible. It's especially that's technically what for car seats are known to feel like. And before I go, before I move on to some of the, like all the how the screen works and how everything works inside this car, there's a little bit more red I want to feature. One, if you look on the outside of these dials, you will also notice like a red and like a chromish trim on the outside of these dials, which they look really good. And of course, you also got the red hazard light button, which looks really, really good on it. Okay, now that's pretty much, like I said, that's pretty much all of the trimming options and all the different aftermarket things inside of this car. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and move on to how everything works inside of this car. Let's go ahead and start with the steering wheel options, like all the steering wheel buttons and stuff like that. So, to the right here, you got everything for the cruise control. If second you get inside of this car, everything for the cruise control would basically be like what you would expect. It would be pretty much automatically, hey, I know how this works. I'm not going to feature this. Of course, everything right here, you got everything that controls the radio as well as the top center screen. I went ahead and started this car up to go and do the rest of it. And also because it's burning hot out here and I want to get some air conditioning in here. Anyway, so looking at the steering wheel again, like I said, you got all the cruise control options on the right. And then you also got everything that controls the radio, like the volume and everything for the radio right here. And you can also turn off and on the radio. And here's also what you would use to scroll through all of the different options. You also got source that actually changes the AM to like, that actually changes the radio from like AM, FM, and kind of like, kind of like your normal source options. That's kind of like what the, that's what the source button does. You also got everything for the phone. That can let you call, answer and hang up the phone. Just like what you would expect to find in pretty much every car and then right over here you also got the speaker button whenever you're on the phone you can use that for like speaker and stuff like that which is just pretty much what that's for now let's go ahead and take a look at the gauge cluster now the gauge cluster just looks absolutely fantastic in this car 
I must say it's one of the coolest looking gauge clusters I have ever seen. And here's a fun fact about this car. The owner of this car's husband uh, has a Mustang and I've actually reviewed his Mustang. It's linked in the description box down below or I'm popping it up as a card at the top right corner. And both this car and his car are both daily driven. Both of, those car, both of their cars are both daily driven cars. So this one has 49,127 miles on it. Possibly the highest mileage WRX in the world. And it's really cool to know that people are actually daily driving their cars like I am. Now, looking back at the gauge cluster. Now, that gauge cluster, I've, been, I've played around with everything for on the steering wheel and all of the extra buttons. And, I have to, and it turns out that, that, that the center screen and the right above, like inside the gauge cluster, I have I played around with everything inside of this uh, interior and I cannot seem to find a button that makes it controls now I cannot find any other controls in the gauge cluster screen area so the gauge cluster screen I can at least as far as I can see does not get adjusted however the screen up here is very adjustable because and you can control that little screen by the switch right underneath the uh, hazard light button and so it has an enter button and it has two arrows on it now you click this, now you, like the arrows indicate what you're supposed to do. You click, you click, you push this um, lever downwards, and you can actually scroll through the different options on the side of the screen. You can also push it up to control, to control, and scroll through the different screens as well. And you will notice this car actually has its own boost gauge, which is pretty cool to see. You can actually see you know, how much boost your car has at this at the any given time. It also lets you know your time and the temperature outside, which is 99 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now, which is crazy. This is why I got this car running with the AC on. Anyway, I scroll up again. Of course, here it actually shows all of your average options, like all of your average gauges, like you got your average miles per gallon, and you also have average acceleration. Now, what average acceleration is, it measures it in percent. It actually measures it actually measures the percent that you press down on the gas pedal. And like it measures from zero to one hundred percent how much gas like like how much you press the gas pedal so it like you say hey you do fifty percent throttle most of the time that's kind of like what that is which is pretty cool to see if you scroll up again in here I cannot I'm, I'm not really sure what this what this gauge what this um, diagram looks like it looks like a G meter as, or, like, or like an inclination meter that's kind of like what this looks like I'm, I, I'm not exactly sure what kind of gauge and like what kind of um, display that is but I must say it does look really really good so now whenever I was driving the car I did not mess through I did not mess with any of this so I'm not exactly sure what that is if you guys know what that is tell me in the comment section down below and I may pop it up as a car just so I can let you guys know what it is I may link one of my videos or something to it and stuff like that you know anyway um, and that's pretty much everything you can see as you can see you also got better gauges um, as you can see, you got your average miles per gallon and stuff like that. And you can also let you know how many miles until empty, which is, which is kind of like what you would see in most cars today, which is pretty cool. And of course, you also got your clock and your date and stuff like that. And if you actually, actually scroll up one more time, if you press and hold down the enter button, here's where you can actually adjust what's displayed. Like, like you can see your driving history and stuff like that which is pretty cool to see pretty much everything inside of that little center screen which it looks pretty cool to see and of course on top you also got your um it actually lets you know how much um how much fan you're using as you see as i adjust the fan speed it actually adjusts it and shows it on that center screen it also lets you know what's on like it lets you know that, you, that your ac is on and stuff like that it also lets you know that your circulation is on which is pretty cool to see and like your normal stuff, it also lets you know the temperature that your car is at as well. Also lets you know the mode that you set it to as well. Also lets you know stuff like that. It's pretty much like what you would expect to find in any other little tiny center screen. And that's pretty much all of the little center screen details. And of course, right in between, you've got the two climate control vents right in the center. Of course, you do got some um, to the left of the driver and to the right of the passenger. But these work just like any other climate control vents. So I'm not going to really talk about those climate control vents too much because they're all just like what you would find in any other climate control system. I guess we can go back to the gauge cluster. Now, this car does have a gauge cluster dimming. If you look to the left of the steering wheel, you'll not only will you find your, your trunk popper and your traction control button, but you will also find what looks like a gauge cluster dimming option. Of course, you press this up and down. That actually dimmens and, get bright and brightens up the gauge cluster. And also the center screen as well. You can see it actually brightens and dims all the screens options as well. However, it's only the top one 
that actually gets dimmer. The one here, the, the big one here in the center, it just gets light lower and you cannot lower it anymore. The thing is though, the gauge cluster and the little center screen are all adjusted by this little, by this little switch and it looks pretty cool. And that's pretty much some of the cool, the, like all the controls for the gauge cluster, the little screen and how to dim it and all of your normal adjustments for the center screen. And that's pretty much, that's, that's pretty much all that. Now it's time to move on to the big screen. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to these big center screen, all of the big center screen options. Now, there is going to be a lot in this part, so just get ready. So, up here, you've got your volume control. To the right, you've got your radio control to control so you can adjust the radio. That's what that's for. You also got your home button. And this, uh, notice this one thing, the buttons that actually control everything are not physical buttons. They're literally like touch screen. You can press it and it works just like an actual touch screen. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's, it's re it is truly incredible. I love how, like how, I love how it all works. It's all super quick and easy and stuff like that. Of course, you also got your CD exchanger. You press this right here and you take out a CD and add a CD and stuff like that. And of course, to the right, you got your home button, your phone button, your apps button, your radio button, and also your seek button. Let's go ahead and press on the home button first. Whenever you press on the home button, this screen will pop up. It'll show your phone, your, your Super Starlink, your media, your apps, your settings, and your radio. And if you go down to the app section, here you can see all of the different apps that are available for this car. And as you can see, you actually got the AHA app. You also got Pandora on your and your Subaru as well. You also got your Travel Link and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, like what you expect to see for all the apps and stuff like that. Just going to go back to the home section. Now, I'm not going to talk about Subaru Starlink because I'm not exactly sure what Subaru Starlink is and I don't want to say something that's wrong. So I'm going to skip out of the Subaru Starlink. I'm pretty sure. And if you guys know what Subaru Starlink means, tell me in the comment section down below. And again, I'll include it as a card so I can show you guys what that's like. If you go down to media, media is where you would go to like access all of your different USBs and your discs and your Bluetooth stuff. That's pretty much where you would find all uh, that's what that's just underneath the media tab you can that's what you would use to be able to play like again your discs your usbs that you included your bluetooth things like anything that's connected to bluetooth that's where you would find all that in the in the media section you go down to radio it actually accesses the radio and of course here you can adjust the source as well not only from the sound steering wheel but you can also do it for, to the left of the radio tab as well and actually the very bottom of it you will notice it has a has a three section tab that goes from one to eighteen. Here is your, you would um, access all of your diff, all of your favorite radio stations. You know how like some cars they have buttons that actually let you set and have like that's like one to six where you can actually set your favorite radio station. Except this, this car does not have that. Instead, it's in um, it's included in the center screen from one to eighteen. So instead of actually having the six and having to, having to clutter up the center control, the, um, the center control stack with six other buttons you include it into the screen and you can have even more you can actually have more than two times more um, um, favorite radio stations stored inside of this car which it looks really good that pretty much wraps up all of the center screen options now let's go now since we're done with all the screens probably the hardest part of the whole video to do let's go ahead and now move on to all of the different dials and stuff like that okay let's go ahead and move on to the dials right underneath the center screen now if it, uh, this car has three dials in the center, uh, right underneath the center screen, and each one is for one very specific climate control option. So the far left one that controls your temperature. And I, one thing I did notice: this car does not have dual zone climate controls. It's one of the first cars I've reviewed that had the, that does not. Well, this is the first new car that I reviewed that I, I've noticed does not have dual zone climate control. Every other car I've reviewed has dual zone climate control. And this right here is what you would use to automatically adjust the temperature. It automatically sets the temperature to what it thinks you need, which is pretty cool to see. You can also completely turn off the um, air conditioning by pressing this off button right to the outside of that. And in the center screen, here is where you would find your fan speed dial. This is the fan speed dial. That's what you would use to adjust the fan speed of the car and you can also turn on and off the AC and circulation in the middle of that as well. Let's go ahead and now take a look at this far right dial and now what this far right dial does that controls your modes. As you see as I adjust it, it actually adjusts the modes like or like where you want the air to come out. And that's pretty much what that's for. And of course right in the middle of that you have your front windshield defroster, 
You also got your rear windshield defroster, and that's pretty much all of the climbing controls inside of this car. And they all come out of these four climate control vents on the side and the, on the front of this car, which they look really, really good. And so that's how you adjust the climate controls in this car. Let's go ahead and let's talk about storage in this car. And there is quite a lot of it. Of course, you've got your glove box, which works just like any other glove box. You also got a storage compartment right, in, right underneath the center screen or the center control stack with a USB port with a car charger outlet and the um, inside of it where you can actually be able to store stuff inside of there. You also got two cup holders and right in front of those two cup holders you have a little tiny storage compartment which I wouldn't imagine really works very well but it, you have, enough, have a little bit of extra storage in this uh, right behind the shifter just in case. You also got your center console storage as you can see which looks really really good and now that's pretty much all of the center storage you do got you do got a gigantic storage compartment with a cup holder to the left on the in the door panel as well as the door pull you can notice a little tiny storage compartment there where you can store a little bit of things and that pretty much wraps up the uh, center control stack and that pretty much wraps up all of the storage inside of this car and I'm gonna say this car is pretty practical for what you get. Of course, you got all of your window controls to roll to roll up and down all of the windows and stuff like that. Much just like what you expect to find in any car. You also got your windshield lock. So now, let's say if you have kids back in your back seats and they're being annoying, you press this button right here, and that prevents them from rolling down the back windows. In fact, you can't even roll down the back windows. You can't even roll down the the, the passenger front window. The only, the only window you, that you can roll down is the driver's side window and you can be the master of this car and you can play, basically play God and prevent all, everybody, anybody from rolling down the windows. Of course you also got your door locks and stuff like that and then you also got the, the switch to actually adjust the mirrors as you can see as it kind of works just like my car you twist it to the left and right to adjust the well, both mirrors and stuff like that and that's pretty much how you adjust the mirrors and that's pretty much all some of the door panel options inside of this car and that's pretty much how everything on the door panels works the storage situation inside of this car that's pretty much how everything works and so that's pretty much all of the different cool options on the front seat of the Subaru WRX now let's go ahead and move on to the back seats. Moving on to the back seat of the Subaru WRX and back here you will not notice anything too special about the exterior about the back about back here. Of course you got more carbon fiber details on the rear door panels. You also got the door handle, you got you got another cup holder and a little bit of storage at the bottom and the speakers. And you also got the same red trimming and red trim lever on uh, leather that you have on the front seats as well. And that's pretty much all the normal uh, cool interesting things back here. You, the rear seats are also colored and actually made out of the same material as the front seats. They're just saying as thickly bolstered as the front seats. And that's pretty much how it's pretty much how like much you would expect to find. And you do also have little nets on the back of the seats as well. Just like what you would find in any car. Back here it looks pretty basically just like any other normal cars. I'm not going to really feature the back seats of this car too much. And that's pretty much all and pretty much most of the interior quirks and features of the Subaru WRX. And so that's the 2019 Subaru WRX Sport. Without any further ado, it's time for the fun part. It's time to get this car out on the road to see how it drives. All right, y'all, driving the Subaru WRX. And now, so far, I'm telling you guys right now, this is one car that I've been dying to review. Dying. I've been dying to review a WRX for I can't even tell you how long and I'm thrilled that I finally get to have the opportunity to drive them. First impressions, the shifting of this car so far, it just feels amazing. The WRX so far, it feels pretty good. Ride comfort is a pretty punishing. That's one thing I will be honest with about this car is that the ride is punishing. Thing is though, it's not like a crazy punishing. It's not like a. It's not like it's uh, terrible. I mean, it drives like on a dime. And also, the steering is dead flat. Dead, dead flat. And I'm not even. I'm not even going crazy with this car. I'm just taking it easy. I'm just taking this car easy. <laughs> I'm sorry to end the drive portion of this video here, but I just realized as I was editing this video that for some reason the other half of the drive video was actually removed or some somewhat deleted from my device, and I have no idea why, so I had to cut it short, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. But anyway, 
to put it in short, this car is incredibly fast, incredibly easy to drive, incredibly fun to drive, and I would totally recommend if you want a fun and easy manual car to drive, this is definitely the car to get. And I can see why everybody loves the WRX so much, and I would totally recommend. And so, there y'all have it. There's the 2019 Subaru WRX. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy, please make sure you guys go hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and also go ahead and go drop a like on this video to support me and the channel. Also, guys, you can subscribe to all my other YouTube channels. They're going to all be linked in the description box down below, as well as all my social medias. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Peace out.